Hey guys, in this video we're going to prove linearization theory for the following equation of motion. x dot is equal to f of xy, and y dot is equal to g of xy. Now if this looks unfamiliar to you, please watch my nonlinear dynamics mini-series. In that series I explain in a simplified mathematical way what linearization is and why it's so useful. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is find the fixed points, which I'll call x star and y star, of this system of differential equations. Recall that the fixed points are points where the flow has zero velocity. In other words, where x dot is equal to zero and y dot is equal to zero. Next, we're going to perform a Taylor series expansion around this fixed point. This means writing our function f as an infinite polynomial. In this case, it can be written as f evaluated at the fixed point, plus the partial of f with respect to x evaluated at the fixed point, times x minus x star, plus the partial of f with respect to y evaluated at the fixed point, times y minus y star, plus higher order terms. We can also do a Taylor series expansion for g of xy as well. Now, as you may have guessed, Linearization involves neglecting all of the higher order, nonlinear terms. We'll talk more about the negative consequences of this truncation at the end of this video. But in addition to this, we can also notice that f and g evaluated at the fixed points must be zero as well because this is the definition of the fixed point. And so now we've got a simplified equation of motion which we can write in matrix form. We can say that f of xy and g of xy are approximately equal to some matrix times the vector x minus x star, y minus y star. And from the Taylor series above, we can tell that the matrix must contain all of the partial derivatives evaluated at the fixed point. Now remember, f and g were equal to x dot and y dot respectively which is the same thing as ddt of x and y, respectively. And so we've made some progress, it seems. We now have our equation of motion in the form ddt of some vector x is equal to some constant matrix A times that vector x. Or do we? Unfortunately, that minus x star and minus y star need to go somehow. Fortunately, that can be solved with a coordinate transformation, which can be done by substituting new variables, which I'll call u and v. I'll define u is equal to x minus x star, and v is equal to y minus y star. If you think about it, u is the horizontal distance away from a fixed point, and v is the vertical distance from the fixed point. So u and v can be thought of as a coordinate system centered at the fixed point. When we differentiate both of these equations, we get u dot is equal to x dot minus d dt of x star, which is zero. And v dot is equal to y dot minus d dt of y star, which is also zero. Okay, and when we substitute these values into the matrix equation, we get this. This is the linearized equation of motion, and it's in the exact form that we want because it can be written as d dt of some vector x is equal to a constant matrix A times the vector x. And this is such a useful form, in part because this linear equation can be solved by finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix A, but also because it enables us to easily characterize the main dynamics we can expect to see and I've made a whole video about that which you can watch too. But for now, let me tell you some key limitations of linearization theory. Firstly, linearization can only ever illuminate the dynamics near the fixed points. In other words, where u and v are close to zero. Otherwise, the higher order terms that we truncated earlier become too large to neglect. Secondly, there are very special edge cases, depending on the matrix A, where the linearization theory breaks down. It turns out that if the trace of the matrix A is equal to zero, or if the determinant of the matrix A is zero, or if the trace squared minus four times the determinant is equal to zero, then our linearization theory can't be trusted. It turns out that in these cases, the nonlinear terms that were truncated earlier are enough to nudge the system into a different region of dynamical behavior. 
But these are just special cases. In all other cases, it's totally fine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers.